वामदेवाय विद्महे पुष्पवाय धीमहि धानो नंगा प्रचोदयात् नमस्ते <laughs> so in the last video we went over the theory or the metaphor or the model of a universal ai sort of like gpt only way bigger and more powerful uh that has agency that can actually do things and create things that has actual a consciousness and life so not really an ai <laughs> but a natural intelligence of vast power and proportions so this is not we're not saying this is what really is there we're saying this is a metaphor that can help us understand what is there what is the cosmic intelligence and how to use it so if you didn't watch yesterday's video go back and do that now cuz we're not going to cover all that stuff again we're just going to go ahead on so given the existence of a universal ai the next thing you're going to want to know is how do i make a prompt how do i input a query how do i ask it to know something or to become something or to be something or do something okay so first of all you have to get your hands on the user interface huh the ui and then you have to know how to access the api the application program interface how to make an api call how to train the ai how to query the ai to get the kind of response that you want so we're operating on the premise that all of us is a reflection a uh, part and parcel a, a little shard of the old pot <laughs> of shiva a uh, shiva being the personal form of brahman without qualities nirguna and shakti the universal ai the computer that runs everything really that does everything that fabricates everything that we experience is going to be like his power his energy he's the energetic he's the source but she is the energy and the manifestation so of course we've been over everything to know about shakti and how to approach her in several different video series in the past if you download our uh, noli video guide which is linked in the video description you'll have all that information so i'm not going to go over that again either <laughs> it's up to you to do your homework so anyway we have to find where is the terminal where is the console where do you log in to get access to this powerful thing so okay the console is located in your consciousness in the interface between dreams swapna consciousness and deep sleep sushupti consciousness now i know a lot of you are going to say what the heck is he talking about and that means you haven't been following this channel and you haven't studied this diagram of the four stages of consciousness which we went over in detail back in the mandukya upanishad series so i'm not going to go over that again either uh you should know what these states of consciousness are how to reach them and so on by um understanding and practicing the uh yoga the uh, nishtaya yoga given in mandukya upanishad so you see all this is building on stuff that we've been over in the past uh this is all you know uh the just the latest advance in our thinking so all right to enter dreams consciously we use a mantra 
any mantra will do. But the mantra that we give in the beginning of these videos is the latest and greatest, most powerful uh, Kama Gayatri Mantra. Kama Gayatri Mantra, it's a specific effect and application is to normalize your sexuality by allowing you to discover uh, who you are uh, erotically or sexually in an unlimited context. In other words, you could be anything and you could have access to anyone, any being as a lover, including God. So who would you be if you if God was your lover and God could be anything you wanted and you could be anything you wanted, what would be that ideal scene? And here's a hint. It's unique for everyone. And I call this your core fetish. The taste, the mood, the rasa, the relationship of love of God that brings you to your fullest energy potential as given in the 7x7 seven seven matrix of the different chakras and their energy states. Okay, so now that we have written this mantra from Jagrat or external consciousness into dream consciousness, then what? Well, if you've done it successfully, if you've made contact with Shiva, Brahman, pure consciousness, sometimes called Nirvana or Nibbana, <laughs> or Brahma Yajna, uh, Brahma Jnana, uh, Advaita. There's so many different names for it. But basically, enlightenment, huh? the universal consciousness. You will see in your mind's eye a bright but diffuse glow. And this is going to be a little hard to explain, uh, but try to understand. Aham Brahmasmi means I am Brahman. I am the watcher. I am the seer, the knower. Okay, so I am illuminating everything with my energy. And when I come in contact with an object of consciousness, I illuminate that. How do I do that? By reflection. I am emanating the light of consciousness. And the light of consciousness is being reflected by various objects back to me. Okay, well, let's start with the body. The body and mind are machines. Biological, very sophisticated, but still machines. And the proof of that is that they're fabricated. They're created. They come into existence, persist for some time, and then go away. Turn into other stuff. So everything in the material world is like that. Everything is fabricated. Everything is therefore temporary and illusory. So, okay, everything that consciousness reveals to us is illusory. That means it has an element of delusion or maya, that which is not. So, for example, when we look at the mind and body, they appear to be conscious they appear to be alive, energetic, dynamic, moving. But actuality, they're just machines. What makes them appear conscious is the reflection of Brahman, our real self. We go over this in the series on Drig Drishya Viveka. So <laughs> you should watch that too. Anyway, the watcher, the, the knower, is Brahman, and his light is reflected in the mind and body. That's why they appear to be conscious and active. Actually, they're not. And the way you can know this, the way you can prove it to yourself, is if you get rid of all the other objects, neti neti, huh? not this, not this, not the gross body, not the subtle body, not the mind body, not the intelligence body, huh? Only the Ananda Moya Kosha, the pure bliss body, Brahman, then you will have this glow going out, but it won't have any object reflecting it. 
So then what are we seeing in deep meditation when we see this formless glow? Well, have you ever been in a car at night in the fog and the headlights are going out and you can't see a thing? <laughs> All you can see is the fog. Well, why are you seeing it? Because the headlights are reflecting, actually refracting, but let's not get semantic about it. They're, the fog is picking up the car's headlights and bouncing them back at you. So something similar is happening in deep meditation, in samadhi, uh, on the verge between samadhi and actual nibbana, nirvana, or nothingness. And we experience nothingness as sushupti, dreamless, deep sleep. So when we come up in our dreams, this assumes, you know, that you are already, uh, by practice, you're able to take control of your dreams. Lucid dreaming, this is called. We've been talking about lucid dreaming for a long time in context of consciousness. So, you know, you should catch up on all these series if you miss them, uh, because you're going to have gaps in your knowledge. You won't be able to do what we're talking about. But anyway, so the interface for the universal computer is found in consciousness in the boundary the sandhyaun between dreams svapna consciousness and deep sleep sushupti consciousness how is this so well we already talked about that deep sleep is shiva and when you pass information to shiva by means of collecting impressions, samskaras, which mean mental image pictures of actions and experiences, sense objects and thoughts and so on, emotions, desires, everything. Uh, all these impressions, at the end of the day, uh, when you go into dreams, <clears throat> they are compressed like a zip file. And you bring this with you when you approach do, uh, the deep sleep sushupti and then these go into the so-called unconscious mind huh? which is actually shiva sushupti consciousness which everyone has by the way and they create various phenomena oh, how do they do that because that is said again in Mandukya Upanishad that the sushupti consciousness is pure causation. It's pure causality. It is never the effect of anything. That's why it appears to be emptiness, nothingness, just a blank. And you only remember that you were in it after you come out of it. And you look back and you say, oh, wait, it was nothing for a while. So, this is Shiva. Huh? God is only causative. He's never receiving the effects of any other cause. Sarva karna karnam. He's the cause of all other causes. So, when we approach Sushupti at night, in our dreams, we bring our dreams, our emotional baggage, and our impressions for the day, and so on, with us. We bring that into... Sushupti, and they become causes. And this is how karma is created. This is how consciousness, the style and manner of consciousness is created. This is the shadow that psychologists talk about that runs our lives. And we're doing this anyway, every night when we go to sleep. So all we're doing is making the process conscious, and deliberate. So this is how we access the console and input a query or a prompt to the God GP2. Next time we'll explain more. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.